Good morning all of you. I am Tanushri Dalai from Civil Engineering Branch. So in the last class, we discussed about shear capacity of HSFG bolt. And these are the formula by which you can calculate the shear capacity of the HSFG bolts. And all this formula are already present in the code book which is IS 800-2007. In the page of 76, you can find out all this formula. Okay. So next one is your failure of the bolted joint. So you know that if there is a bolted connection, then somehow due to some problem, due to some uh, tensile stress or due to some other things, because it is exposed to weather condition, it is exposed to everything so that the bolted connection have some failure also. So in general, we consider six types of failure in case of bolted connection. So first failure is due to the sear failure of the bolt. Then next one is your bearing failure of the bolt. Then third one is your bearing failure of the plate and fourth one is your tension failure of the bolt. The next one is your tension or tearing rupture failure of plate. The last one is your sear failure of the plate and last is block failure. So first of all we have to know what do we mean by sear failure of the bolt. So Sear failure of the bolt means it will occur when sear stress of the bolt section is greater than nominal sear stress. Okay. Whenever in case of any joint section, if we will provide a bolt connection, then if the nominal sear stress is lesser than the sear stress in bolt, then that means the shear failure of the bolt will occur and it is divided into two types according to the provision of the plate that means whether it is lap joint or bot joint the shear failure is different so first one is your single shear failure okay so where the single shear failure will occur so single shear failure will occur at one section of the bolt and it is always occur in the case of lap joint that means where the two main plates are jointed by overlapping each other at that time the chances of single shear failure will occur and then second one is your double shear failure and it will occur at two section of the bolt and it will occur in the case of bot joint that means whenever the two main plates are jointed with a copper plate along the upper side and bottom side of the main plate at that time we can say that kind of shear failure is double shear failure so you can see the figure over here for the single shear failure and double shear failure. So you can see the alignment of the bolt section that means the sand and the threaded portion is not in a single line. Somehow it is deviated from its actual position. Okay. So you can see this line and this line is not in a single alignment so that you can say and it is also a lap joint it is a main plate and another main plate and it is jointed by overlapping each other with a single line bolted connection but the alignment of the bolt section is not properly in one line so this kind of failure you can say a single shear failure then come to the next figure 
it is a case of bot joint that means the middle portion is main plate and over it a cover plate is there and below it another cover plate is there here also a single line bolting connection is there and the alignment of the bolting connection is not properly in one line okay so that means this kind of shear failure is known as your double shear failure of the bolt section okay so now comes to another failure which is bearing failure of bolt and bearing failure of the plate so if the bolt section and the plate section subjected to bearing failure then we can say the total joint of the plate section is undergo the bearing failure that means in general transfer of force in connection parts through bearing action and half circumference of plate in contact with bolt get crossed that means plate weaker than the bolt and the half circumference of the bolt in contact with plate get crossed that means bolt weaker than the plate or partially bolt plate and bolt are get crossed so somehow you can see in the figure this figure this is the figure of bearing failure of the plate as well as in the bolt so you can see the total plate it is the lap joint plate okay because due to this line it is overlapping connection it is sign that and it is subjected to two tensile forces over here and you can see that if we draw a cross section then the center of the cross should be placed on the center of the bolt or center of the whole section but here due to the crossing of the bolt and due to the crossing of the plate section somehow the bolt is deviated from the whole section that means here the whole section is there and this portion is the bolt section okay so due to the crossing of the bolting connection the bolt is somehow deviated from its original position so that we can say this kind of failure is known as your bearing type of failure in case of bolt and due to the bearing failure in the bolt section the plate also deviated from its position due to the disturbance of the bolt so that's also known as the bearing failure in the plate section then now comes to the another failure of the bolt which is tension failure of the bolt so in what case we know that tension failure will occur so if the bolt in tension and tensile stress in bolt is greater than the permissible stress that is tension failure at root of the thread get weak then that kind of failure of the bolt is known as tension failure of the bolt so you can see here this is a plate which is jointed by lap connection and it is subjected to tensile force along the left and right side and you can see the plate section is break down from the center of the bolting connection and the failure is in the vertical line okay so due to the tensile stress because the tensile stress in the bolt is much more than the permissible stress which is not safe for the structure if we have to save the structure then our permissible stress should be more than the tensile stress of the bolt but if it is opposite then the plate section is break down vertically from the center of the bolt section okay so 
the this part of the plate section is detached from the whole structure due to the tensile failure of the plate the next one is your shear failure of the plate due to insufficient end distance that is distance from the end of the plate from the center of the nearest hole measured along the force direction then it can be prevented by providing enough end distance so shear failure of the plate means you know that what do you mean by end distance or edge distance the edge distance is the distance between nearest bolt hole center to the bottom or top end of the plate so if that distance is very very minimum then at that time shear failure of the plate will occur so we can prevent this kind of failure by providing much more distance of the edge distance in case of plate section which provide the bolts then we can prevent this kind of failure then last one is your block failure block failure means whenever a combination of shear failure and tension failure will occur in the joint of the plate section while it is provided with bolting connection then block failure will occur it will occur along the force direction you can see here it is a plate section who is provided with four numbers of bolting connection and the main plate is attached with another plate which is known as gosset plate okay and it is provided with tensile force over here so due to the tensile force the detachment between plate and bolt will occur how this portion of the plate section will detach from the whole section so you can see here after detachment of this section the portion will look like this okay so the block of this section will be detached due to the tensile load and this kind of failure is known as your block failure and here also shear failure is the main reason due to the block shear failure okay so this is all about your failure of the bolted joint so today this much we will discuss next of the thing in the next class thank you